What's up, Garden and Friends? What we're looking at here is my absolute favorite crepe myrtle. And this particular crepe myrtle is the pink velour crepe myrtle, Lagerstromia indica wit. Third, it's a hybrid. Those flowers. This crepe myrtle, the pink velour, has some of the prettiest flowers that I've seen on a really super hardy crepe myrtle. Where I live, a crepe myrtle being hardy is super, super, super important. The pink velour crepe myrtle has an upright growing habit. Crepe myrtles tend to have three different growing habits. Just like both shrubs generally have three different types of growing habits in trees, you'll have kind of a mounding, low growing plant. It stays kind of weird and oddly shaped. And then there are large tree shapes that are more bulbous and round. And then you have vase shaped. And in this situation, it's just referred to as upright. There's so much you can do with the vase shape. You can put them in corners. They do really well framing things. You can have one on two separate sides of a walkway or an entryway. Vase shaped plants really give a great structure. So just some quick information about the pink floor crepe myrtle. You need to keep them well watered the first year. This one gets six to 12 feet high and six to eight feet wide. I know that that's like an incredibly odd variance in the size, but a lot of that has to do with pruning. And I think that the reason it's often advertised as six to 12 feet high is because they're accounting for the variance where some places it might die down to the ground during the winter time. This guy is solidly hardy from zero to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit, making it a zone six and up. So it's not hardy in zones one through five. However, you could almost definitely grow this as a dieback plant in zone five with a lot of heavy mulch uh, and you know there's things that vary if you don't have a hot spring and summer to bring it back out of the ground then maybe not for you and where i live crepe myrtles are really hit or miss that's why this one is one of my favorites i have tried just about every single crepe myrtle under the sun and that's not true there are tons and tons of varieties nowadays but i have tried so many and the most reliable crepe myrtle in my zone six as far as it being hardy to the wood meaning it regrows from the wood and not just from the ground has been the pink velour i have three different ones i haven't protected any of them during the winter and they're in three incredibly different spots one of them is on top of a hill one of them's in front of a brick wall but it doesn't get much sun and uh, it's facing north which is not ideal for a crepe myrtle i should probably move that one and this guy right here is on kind of a southwest facing wall which you would think, hey, this is a really warm spot, but I've had years where there, I had a Rhodes of Sharon here that died. So I'm not claiming this to be more hardy than a Rhodes of Sharon, that was just a bad year. Over the years, I have tried the Natchez, which I still have, but it dies back to the ground just about every single year. I've tried the Red Dynamite, the Red Rocket, the Tuscaroo, the Tonto, the Sioux, the Muskegee, Catawba. I think there's one called like Majestic or something like that. I don't know. I've tried so many and this has been the only one that reliably comes back every single year from the wood. And I see it all over St. Louis, so I know that it's not just here. This is a super duper tough crepe myrtle. I love having crepe myrtles around. They provide a great contrast. Like I said earlier, they give a ton of great structure and they attract hummingbirds and butterflies and bees. And unfortunately also Japanese beetles really love them. They just showed up here in my garden a few days ago and it's, I'm gonna have to I guess spray for them. One thing worthy of note with crepe myrtles, they have sort of a symbiotic relationship with ants. So if you are using pesticides near them, you have to be really careful. Last year, um, for a few years, there was a red dynamite in this spot and a mosquito company came through and sprayed and I told them don't spray the crepe myrtles. And they know not to spray the crepe myrtles, but they did. And it didn't die, but it looked bad. Very, very, very bad. So I dug it up and I moved one of my pink velours over to this spot so you know that's why it's shapes a little bit wonky uh, it had some recovering to do but over the years this will i would say within the next two to three years this should double in height and then hopefully it'll be mostly trunk in front of the windows with some foliage down low so you can kind of see through it from in the house right now it is sort of an obstruction but i'm fine with that because i think it's great to look outside and see hummingbirds and butterflies flying all around outside the windows the flowers on these are so pretty. I for one have always preferred pink and fuchsia magenta -y type crepe myrtles over the whites and reds and sort of like the pale purples. And where I live there are not many that are really hardy that have that really pretty color. You may also notice the pink floor has darker foliage, especially in the springtime when they start to regrow from the wood, the new growth really does have a reddish hint to it. See even the buds have this nice bronze color to them. 
The flowers seem to be fairly long-lived. Right now, they're pretty short for me because the Japanese beetles just came in. They started munching on them, so I need to get down to get rid of those today. Typically, you can expect these to bloom for you summer and fall. To get them to bloom in the fall, I would suggest going through and snipping off any spent flower buds. And that's one of the great things about the pink floor crepe myrtle. Usually it'll give you a second flush of flowers if you go ahead and prune it. I may not end up pruning mine this year because I want it to get some height and it's once you make a cut, then it's done with vertical height. So it'll, it'll get some growth in the years forward, but I want this to get more trunk on it before I start doing that. But with the lower branches, I'm gonna go ahead and give those a prune. Okay, so those are all the reasons why the pink floor is my favorite for being a hardy crepe myrtle because it's just so reliably cold hardy and it's beautiful. If you live in zones 7b, 8, and south, you don't really have to worry that much about the cold hardiness of your crepe myrtles. Even in zone 7a, probably not that big of a deal. That 5 to 10 degree difference, man, it, you just don't see a ton of crepe myrtles where I live, but you're starting to see more and more as they're becoming hybridized and there's more hardy varieties around which I think is just amazing. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you already haven't. I try and upload multiple times a week. Let me know what you think of this crepe myrtle, if you've grown it, uh, what crepe myrtles you really like. I know my personal favorites are probably the Miami Pink and the Tonto, but they just don't grow that great here. Tontos are okay, but the Tonto looks very similar to the Pink Velour. Thanks for watching. Hope you're doing well and keep on growing. Bye-bye.